This episode is brought to you by Sidekick Accounting. If you have a business, you're going to want to listen up. One of the biggest issues I come across with people in business is that we feel like our accountant doesn't understand us, doesn't understand us, doesn't understand our business model, our culture, and if you're in tech, then a lot of the services that we sell. That's a huge problem considering your accountant is advising you on how to best run your finances. They need to understand you and your business. For many of us, we usually start with someone who was introduced by family or friends, but don't realize that they're not equipped to help us scale. Another problem I hear often is that people just don't have a relationship with their accountant. They speak to them once or twice a year when tax is due or through one email per month asking them to fill in their VAT. This person is essentially running the financial side of your business. You should have a strong relationship with them. And that's where Sidekick Accounting comes in. So first of all, I want to reassure you guys, while this is a sponsored post, as you know, I always want to make sure what we present to you is something that we know. And so I've had a couple of meetings now with Ray Hahn, who is the founder of Sidekick, who I'm going to tell you a bit more about in a second, to make sure that he understands the freshly guided audience. So let's talk about Ray Hahn and Sidekick. Here's what you need to know. Sidekick are available and accessible all year round and are very responsive. While they can support all businesses, they specialize in digital and tech savvy companies. Rehan's team is so good that for some clients, they are the complete end-to-end -end outsourced finance team, handling everything from payments to strategy and of course, taxes. Did you know that 95% of businesses are missing tax opportunities because their accountants don't understand their business goals? Rehan's team has saved an average of 25% for their clients. They don't just simply file your end of year returns and see you next time. You can actually finally have a strong relationship with your accountants. And because I know how important it is to build relationships with people personally, especially somebody who's dealing with your money, I said to Rehan, I want to make sure that Freshly Grounded Tribe is looked after. So I want you to personally speak to anyone who comes through Freshly Grounded. And he agreed. So if you're looking for an accountant who will build with you, head over to sidekickaccounting.co.uk forward slash freshly grounded. That's sidekick, S I D E K I C K, accounting, A C C O U N T I N G dot co dot UK forward slash freshly grounded. Fill out the form and we'll make sure that Rehan personally gets in touch with you. Now over to the episode. Uh, when I did this, I didn't, I didn't want to say the word God. I didn't want to use those terms because I thought religions are stupid. It's fairy tales. There are fairy tales. So I said, the one who hears me and the one who sees me, that's what I used. Asamir al Basir. SubhanAllah. One of Allah's, two of Allah's name. So I said, the one who sees me, the one who hears me, guide me to whatever is right. Guide whatever you think is good for me. So I, I, I didn't really care about my desires anymore. I thought like, bro, I've, I've tried to fill this cup inside by myself. I haven't worked out well. So I leave it to you, whoever you are. And welcome to a Freshly Grounded, the brand new podcast. Well, it's not exactly brand new anymore, is it? Welcome to Freshly Grounded, the podcast. That's better. Created by best friends, Faisal and Sam. Huh? I, welcome, I said, welcome to Freshly Grounded. Off that bit. Created by... And after that bit. Best friends, Faisal and Sam. Really? So, so, okay, we're live. We're on. Um, yeah, yeah. Your social media... Salam alaikum. <laughs> Simon says squat. Your yeah. social, I love your social media because... Uh, have you recently even tried, even stepped it up, arguably? Uh, yeah, I would say, yeah. Yeah. yeah I would like, say, yeah, as well. Yeah, really? Alhamdulillah. Uh, uh, you're doing a great job. The, the way you're doing social media yeah. is how social media should be done. Along I don't know, like it, No, no, it is. It depends. Hey. Okay. It is. I, but... Not. I, the, here's my issue with social media. Yeah. Man, if like I get so stuck on the idea of social media, mm -hmm. and dare I say, um, like in what way? Almost um, to the point of I freeze with the idea of social media. I tell you, I tell you, I tell you what I mean. I spoke to yeah. numerous people about this. And th th uh, in fact, when I spoke to Ustad Yahya Rabi, you know Ustad Yahya yeah, Rabi? Yeah, yeah. When I spoke to him about it, he said, people overthink social media too much. Just post and leave it, like, whatever. Like, don't overthink the comments and this, that, and the other. So basically, mm. the, the reason, the, the, the thing that tripped me up with social media is I started in, like, 2013 or 14, mm. so maybe 2015. 
And I've very fast rise from zero to 30,000 followers or yeah, whatever, right, on YouTube that. and Instagram. Mm, right. And then, at around that mark, what happened is, there was a few things in my life that made me think, maybe I don't want to be on social media. Mm. So I started leaving and stuff like that. Mm. And um, for anybody who's a hardcore Freshly Grounded listener, they're gonna be like, oh man, this story again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, uh, so uh, to quickly kind of summarize them, yeah. it was stuff like, um, the, the negative comments, mm. and it, which is kind of like, why am I giving people the ammunition to comment on my life? Because 99% mm. of people who follow you, they don't follow you necessarily because they love you. They might not hate you, but it's mm. not because they love you either. They mm. might just be nosy. Like, because when I looked at the people that I was following once, I was like, well, why do I follow this person? I, it's probably just because I want to know what they're up to. I want to get the updates. Mm. And that's yeah. a weird thing, right? Mm. And, um, so there's that, and then there's, um, and then there was like, oh, I enjoy living a private life because the more I'm living a private life, mm. the more I realize that I'm not struggling to sleep, for example. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not thinking, oh, I put this up, what are people gonna think about this and stuff like that. And the third and the biggest yeah. one, the biggest one was this uh, struggle that I had of you know the hadith about the, the two hungry wolves? Yeah, I, uh, well, I was just thinking about it. I was like, where did I hear that? I think it was here, right? Yeah. Because I think I saw one of the Sheikh clips. Muhammad Tim mentioned it on the podcast once, and then I made a clip about it recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's the one. Yeah. It, yeah. Bro, subhanAllah, it's all about it. I was like, man, that's so, so true. So that hadith about two hungry wolves, that really, really like made me think, if I'm doing this, yeah. um, essentially I'm doing it for notoriety, mm. and... <clears throat> I don't know if that's something I should be comfortable with. Now, prior to a few years ago, not only was I comfortable with it, I wanted it. Mm. Now I've almost trained my mind to be very uncomfortable with it. So there's, I did a podcast recently with a guy called No Risk, No Rizq. And it was a few, <laughs> uh, it was like a month or two ago, three months ago maybe. Yeah. Uh, and, but he's, I, re I just saw now that he's, he's posting the clips of it now. Right? Right. So it's gonna come out maybe this week. Nice. And I feel really rude because he's posting the clips and he's tagging me and I'm not like reposting or adding it to my story because I'm watching the clips and I feel so uncomfortable. Mm. Like it's me talking about my life. I'm like, why am I doing that? Who am I? Yeah. So, I've always got, so I've got myself almost, but potentially I've got myself too far down the wrong path maybe. And so I think pot potentially the right balance is what you're doing, which I think, and you can tell me if I'm right or wrong, is right. that you do not in any way speak about or showcase your personal life but you have a public persona which uh through which you are benefiting others whether it's mm -hmm. about uh, islam or about working out and stuff like that and i do think that that's the perfect uh that's the perfect balance because you have value to give to the world yeah. and if i'm honest in a non-arrogant way i feel like i have some value that i can give or at least i feel like um Allah gives different people different strengths and weaknesses. Definitely, and yeah. a lot of people struggle with being in front of the camera or struggle to speak. And as you can tell from the first four minutes of this podcast, I haven't let you get a word in, so I don't mm. struggle to speak. <laughs> so maybe, and I have the equipment and I've built mm. my life around content and content is what I do in all aspects of my life. So mm -hmm. I would love to delve back into con content, but it's those three elements that have made me fall off. So when I see what you're doing yeah. and it's the exact kind of formula that I, at this in 2023, would have followed. Mm. And Allahum I sit back and I watch it and I think this is amazing. So congratulations uh, <laughs> on my approval. <laughs> 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 it's it's, it's, I think, a, it's I think, an honor. It's no, no, honor. I think, I, I, in yeah. all jokes aside, I think what you're doing with social media is, is great. Yeah. Uh, I think it's why we're doing it now. I think I'm done. Uh, no, 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 This is no, no, all no. I needed, bro. I convinced you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but break it down for me. So, uh, what was no, your kind yeah. of thinking behind it? Because you're doing a great job on it right now. No, the thing is, you know, I wish it. I like. I had a big story to tell you. Like I'm back at my house with a black, like a whiteboard, writing all these formulas, algorithm. I don't have any of that. I'm just thinking, like, um, let's try this and see what happens. Because the thing is, I come from a very like very creative background. Like like I was a music producer and that's just how I wor like to work. I just have an idea, I have a concept and I'm like, okay, let's try this, let's see what happens. And I'm willing to fail. I'm willing, I'm almost expecting to fail. If I'm not failing or if it's not like, if I don't see any improvements or points of improvements I can do, that's when I get, okay, something's wrong. You get what I mean? And I think all you need to do is, which is a beautiful part of Islam, 
everything comes down to your intention. When you go into something, why? You need to definitely ask you the question why, like no matter what that is. And especially like you say, going into social media, being in front of a camera like this, it's gonna be, there's gonna be consequences. We cannot, like even if, like the thing you said, like, okay, you're gonna have some haters and this and that. I think this, it depends. It depends on the content you create and the audience you create it for. What type of audience is that? Like what I've noticed, like I'm coming in, I don't have like, I'm not very provocative. I don't have that type of content. It's more like anyone can listen. I even have Christian, like Orthodox Christian, Catholic, uh, like Catholic Christian, atheists, they write like, oh, I love your content. It's like, and that can be good and bad sometimes because then you don't have, if, if you don't have people like hating on you or like against you, then what are you like, what are you doing? Like what's the friction you're creating? But I think you can create that friction in different ways. It doesn't have to be a, like opinion based friction. Does it make sense? Like, so I think it's just a balance of, okay, you got the Nia, why are you doing it? And I think that's gonna be the fundamental thing. Like, if you're gonna do it, like you said, you wanted to, I think you mentioned like a couple of years ago, I wanna do it like fame, the, this type of feeling, right? To be known. And I, I had the same thing. Like before I became a Muslim, subhanAllah, I know, I, like, I spent so much time becoming famous. Mm -hmm. the, I was doing modeling job in UK, might not be, you know, uh, something people think about when they see me, but you know, no, I was doing things like outrageous things to become, become famous. I never got, I never like, but then subhanAllah when I come into Islam, even doing this type of social media, it was a big, like, I had a lot of, you know, f like I was very hesitant, hesitant about it. I had to do deep thinking about it. like, do I want to really want to do this? How am I going to do it? Consulting with my wife, how should I do it? Like she has helped me a lot in this, wallahi, and really helped me to put my, put myself in place and not to show too much. Right, show what's needed to show, like show what's valuable. All, all other than that, just filter it out. You don't have to show it. And I think for Muslims out there that want to do social media, like don't go into, don't go into is, don't go into things for dunya reason, being famous and all these, because the consequence of that's going to be detrimental. Like, yeah. So I think the balance is near, and then knowing how you want to create your content. I mean, you, you don't even, like there's content out there, like the YouTube channels making millions of dollars, bro. They don't even have a face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's not even a person behind that. Yeah, is that automated, yeah? The automated things, e like, you, have you seen like these, uh, they write things? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're just like in the up, like if. Uh, yeah, exactly, uh, bird's eye view, yeah. There's even like courses that exist uh, where they're, t they're teaching people how you can automate a YouTube channel without yeah. writing any content, without being on camera, without exactly, speaking. Yeah. I'm not sure about that, to be honest. It's like no, it's, I think it's true. You can obviously you get, can do, you can get you know, a script written by a copywriter and then you get the voiceover done by someone on Fiverr and then you get an animation done by someone on Fiverr and then you've got a worker who's doing all of your uploads and mm. so all of it's being done you know i actually know somebody who's doing that actually mm. and their channel has got uh, a few million at least one million subscribers Mashallah. but if you miss it it's a sports channel yeah so they showcase like i think the latest basketball news or transfer rumors or something mm. and it's the whole thing is automated like that and uh, they're just churning money man. the only problem is with that what i see like when you, when you don't have like a, a human, like a human en element behind it, behind it. It's like hard to make a business out of it. Yeah, it's more like a like a you know some passive income thing. I mean, they're smashing it, but yeah. th but then again, you, like it's, it's YouTube money, which is again something that I'm like, you know, yeah. it's a whole different battle, a whole different kettle of fish. But um, yeah, yeah. So did, did you start me. social media uh, after you got married? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The best decision, I, or the best, not decision, because was it a decision or was it just like, it just happened that way? No, no, it was a decision. Okay. The thing is, bro, look, when I became a Muslim, I was really like, uh, like I told you before we recorded, I, I was like hardcore Muslim, right? You know, the real deal, <laughs> the revert with the thobe and talking about hijrah all the time, you know, and I was that type of guy. I, 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 m I followed the opinion that taking pictures was haram and doing all these things was haram, right? So I didn't do any of that. And I think that was just like a, for me, 
a way of just, you know, making a transition from my old life because it was like quite the opposite. Like, like I said, like trying to hunt fame and get fame and all these things and party and, you know, non-Muslim life, right? So, but then I realized like the, I don't know if you should go there now, but it, there was a time when I met my wife, we talked, uh, so we lived like six hours away from each other. So it's like just, you know, Facebook messaging, her brother was in there, you know. And then I came to Stockholm uh, to the capital where she lived and we met, we decided to get married and all that, alhamdulillah. And then um, I got into like really into fitness and I met another brother, Bilal, that you know, right? Oh, okay, fine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And we started this ActFit. Okay, yeah. Bilal is a, uh, a very well networked brother, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, he's a real yeah. spider in the web guy, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He does well, so right. Alhamdulillah. Mm -hmm. It doesn't surprise me that like you're connected through Bilal. Huh? It doesn't surprise me that like the story somehow involves Bilal. Yeah, the thing is I knew Bilal way before. Right? Okay. When I think he was like the same way I was when I was a new Muslim. Fine. And like we, the thing is Sweden, it's not like you. Bilal has been hitting the gym recently, hasn't he? Yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. He yeah. was, uh, when I met him, bro, he was 140 kg. 140. Uh, what? Yeah. Do you use kg? You use kg? Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I, I, I thought you were going to say something like he was like 50 kg or 45, like super underweight. 140. Yeah, he was. That's the thing. He was underweight. That's what before I met him. I heard this from guys and some people. And then when I met him, he was 140. Man. No, no, 140 bro, kilos. Ye yes, bro. He was big. <laughs> that's no, but that's that's not. I'm not. I don't know anybody. I know people who are really. Yeah, maybe he was like 130 something, but he, I, he's saying like 140, like wow. that, Round, rounding it up or something. But mm, and you're not talking muscle. <laughs> no, <laughs> fortunately not, man. Sorry, Bilal, man. If you listen, no. And then, but he looks great. Yeah, now he's like eighty k kg, so he's like almost half half the person. Yeah, he yeah, he looks really good, mashallah. Yeah, alhamdulillah. So that that thing, he got into fitness. We met like that, and got closer. And then we talked. I we talked about like, bro, why don't? Because it was like a thing back like during that time, people opening up inspirational fitness things, mm -hmm. and we thought like, man. There should be some kind of Islamic, like halal, not, you know, all these fitna, right? Uh, fitness pages. So we just started it. But the thing is, that's where I like, okay, man, I'm going to go into this, taking pictures, har haram, you know. Mm. So I talked a lot about, because the thing is, when I met my wife, one of the things she liked about me was that I didn't have social media. Yeah. <laughs> and now you have now it's like how many followers have you got like 170 yeah 170 yeah, yeah. On, uh, on Instagram is yeah. Instagram your biggest channel no no TikTok is almost 500 oh really okay yeah. so Alhamdulillah. so uh, Alhamdulillah. You, uh, at what point did the tr uh, at what point did you see it start seeing like really fast growth was it from when you started this kind of these clips that you're doing now no no it, it comes like in phase like different stages right so the first thing was when I opened Simus' squad because the first thing we had was ActFit we did that, we had like 3,000 followers, like only Swedish followers, so it's like ca quite big in the Swedish Swedish uh, context. And then I was in my, first, like my personal training education uh, thing, right? So I thought to myself, yeah, but we're doing this like inspirational, but I'm thinking like, I'm gonna do this, for, I wanna do something for a living, like working with fitness. So I thought, okay, let's start this this uh, Instagram uh, channel. So I started Simon Says Squat, which is like just a side thing. And then it was actually Ramadan of, I think 2020, you know, 2021 maybe, uh, that it blew up. Because I started doing these sign language videos, which has nothing to do with fitness, by the way. But I, you know, the, I did this Al-Fatiha by Umar Hisham. I think I've seen this video. Yeah, it went viral. Right? I, I, now, so you, you, so you said you uh, speak five languages. So yeah, English, so Arabic, English, yeah. uh, uh, Swedish, Swedish, sign. Sign language, yeah. And uh, then Somali. Somali you is speak like Somali as well. Yeah, my wife's Somali, so uh, Wow, that's so similar to um uh, to <laughs> Sam. Sam of Radio. Sorry, I just keep checking make sure because I, the, I don't want the camera to die out. No worries. Because the now the fan stops sometimes it burns out in the ah, weather. Right, that's right. Uh, the only problem that you have in Dubai. In the UK it's <laughs> like but in Dubai your cameras <laughs> overheat very really. You need candles. Um, so uh, yeah, Sam Okay, that's Somalia. like Sam Somalia, yeah, yeah, very similar. I, I spoke with he him. Also speaks, he also um not speak sign but can do sign. Yeah, because no, the thing is, what was it like? Is it like one of his like his family members? 
Don't. His wife. His wife. His, his wife is deaf. No. Or is his wife is deaf or hard of hearing? Yeah, that's Sounds, it. That's yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's and it. his family is Somali. Like his you. family. Yeah, his family is Somali, like you. Like his wife, she's Somali. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, mean yeah, like yeah, yeah, like exactly. But he's he's like UK. He's UK, yeah. Yeah, yeah he's uh, Adan. Like uh, he's from Cornwall, like like how far, like like um. Yeah. Our, uh, countryside. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. Yeah, yeah. Mashallah. Now I've spoken with him. Amazing, like, it's yeah. very. I had like a podcast with him, like a uh, episode oh, with him. Okay, he had, like, Maybe this, that's where I saw it. Yeah, yeah. So we talked. Subhanallah. So it's very similar. No. So the thing is with. Uh, yeah. So he started with that video, sign language. The thing is with sign language. Not pe- a lot of people know this, but it's different, depending on the country. Yeah, yeah. He said, yeah. Yes, yeah, because the thing is like, languages. How do they develop? Developed by people coming together, communicating. That's basically it so obviously you cannot have a language that exactly the same all around the world because how it doesn't make sense right so often sign language comes out from the speak spoken language uh, like a you know it uses that type of grammar it makes sense so um, the thing is when I did that video I wanted to do because we had this thing in Swedish la- uh, sign language because I went when I grew up I went into this school for hearing because impa- I'm hearing impaired okay my father's deaf my gra- my my, uh, my mom's father's deaf we have like deafness in our family so right? it can be genetic yeah it's like no way yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like uh, if you have uh, used glasses it's yeah. probably because someone in your family has that and it can be l- even like this yeah two p- deaf parents having a hearing child a okay. normal like so it doesn't like work like uh, it can jump over generations it can be depend you know i don't know genetics but something like that right so what happened was um i thought to myself in sweden we have this th- sign singing okay so i don't know if you yeah probably not but we do the what's it called man your vision yeah. yeah yeah so one year i don't remember what what year one of the swedish ac- uh, ac- um, singers uh, she won the okay. eurovision with euphoria i think right okay what they did then they did a sign language singing thing collab okay, okay. so what you do is you have the music and the d- lyrics and then you do a sign language like a cho- choreography like a dance thing but it's sign language okay fine Makes sense? Yeah, makes sense. So I thought to myself, well, why don't we have like that in Quran? Because all the videos I saw about Quran sign language was so boring. It's like when you listen to a recitation, you know, like, mashallah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah it's, true. Like, it's not like someone just talking and reading. Like, you beautify it. Of course. So why shouldn't you beautify sign language, man? Sah. Right? So that's just what I thought. And I made this video with Al Fatiha. And yeah, it went, went, went viral. And that's just, I just, that Ramadan, I had like 200 followers. At the end, I had like, 15, 20k. Wow. Something. Yeah, so it's like, oh, I was like, okay. That was in Ramadan? Yeah, during okay. Ramadan. Often during uh, Ramadan, my, it, I don't know why, but that's the Alhamdulillah, Holy alhamdulillah, Month. Alhamdulillah, yeah. Yeah. Barakah yeah. <laughs> Barakah. Even in those places, Alhamdulillah. So uh, then you, uh, then you went from that to Simon Says Squat and you started focusing, because now it seems like you have a really nice mix of um, fitness content, mm. Uh, Islamic content mm. and like lifestyle, all in all in Quran, or like Islamic lifestyle kind of advice and uh, yeah, and then I you have like hu- humor kind of side as well. Yeah, so it's, like I said, at different stages. So the thing is, you're like, comedian, huh? You're a comedian. No, comedian. no, I don't mind. Because that's the thing. I, I went into that rabbit hole. Oh really? Yeah, and I felt like no, this. No, is no, not your videos are good. They, they're comical, but it's not. But it's it's, it's yeah, fun. Yeah, it's not like you're. F- I'm a fool, a clown. Yeah, because you got to be. Kept, do you know what? This is something that I, I I thought about as well a lot because when I first started making videos, mm. a lot of my videos were comical. Yeah. Back in the day, years ago, and I've always been of the mindset that I don't mind making fun of myself, because I don't have. Um, I don't have an insecurity in that sense right, right, yeah. that um, I'm too worried about what people think about me to the put to the level, and and, and I think other, because other people might have that. I like to break the uh, what, what do you call it? Like you um, yeah, I know the thing. Like you, you break the ice mm. by kind of uh, mm. letting yourself be the butt of the joke, and I don't mind. I didn't. I didn't and don't mind letting myself be the butt of my butt right. of the joke. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but of my joke. <laughs> but what I realized is, right. is even though you are not insecure, and so therefore you are willing to do that for the sake of 
uh, the camaraderie, mm. um, you lose Izza and honor. Uh, because yeah. when you make yourself the butt of the joke, two things happen. One is that other people feel like they can make fun of you, so you lose respect. Yeah, and secondly, um, you realize as you learn about Islam that although arrogance is not permissible at all in Islam, honor or izza is incredibly high, a, a high status in Islam. Definitely. One should have honor. And that's, if you look at the characteristics that we're meant to have in the Sunnah, um, they actually uh, breed honor. Mm. Like uh, you shouldn't speak to uh, don't, 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 unless you have something good to say, don't speak kind of thing, or Even or, or, or don't speak about your personal matters or your private matters, and uh, don't speak about your plans. But right. all of these things actually create honor, don't they? Yeah, the yeah. way you walk, walk with some like you're, you're like you're going somewhere, like you're doing something. Mm. Uh, you know, some of the scholars say one of the best places that person can be is in his home, mm. you know, away from. Away from people. People. Uh, this it fits all me, man. brings honor, right? If I look at your <laughs> so and also like you ruin ruining someone else else's honor. Ruining like, someone else's honor. Like yeah, ba exactly. backbiting and yeah. like even you talk about uh, uh, you know a Muslim woman and Soft. talk down on her like you know Soft. that's that's Soft. severe punishment, man. And um, and and also like obviously the. Um, the thing about jokes should be like uh, salt on food, just seasoning. And I think yeah. sometimes my uh, my food is a bit too salty. You could say I haven't seen and that. So to be honest, I don't know. Like, is this now or like no, old? No, this was years ago. Right, right. Like all of my videos were like right, right. I was just uh, making like your, sketches. Sketches, yeah. yeah, yeah. I was for freshly grounded. In fact, freshly grounded grew because of the sketches. Really, to be honest, really? yeah. Uh -huh. Because <laughs> Sam, Sam, obviously my partner in freshly grounded is like six foot six, um, <laughs> and we've come from two completely different backgrounds, and mm. so we would make fun of the fact that like here's two guys that. If for all tens of purposes, like shouldn't be friends. Like we have nothing in common, but the dean and the dean is what connects anyone. Yeah, and so we used to make that a joke out of that, and we still do privately and, mm. and and still in videos. If you look at episode three hundred, but we just toned it down a little because even Sam said he didn't feel comfortable. Like he didn't want to meet. He he didn't feel comfortable uh, with me being the butt of the joke. Um, if like I wasn't comfortable with it, and mm. so it was nice. We had this mutual thing where it's like okay, like and bro, I'm. 29, I'm going to be 30 next year, yes, inshallah. Yeah, yeah. I have yeah. kids now. Yeah. And my kids go to school and I have to just deal with the teachers. Yeah. And stuff. You need a bit of like a izah. <laughs> but you look like, you, know I mean? you can even take that example. Like there's two things I want to say about yeah. that. Because it's one thing to be comical and one thing to be entertaining. Yes. Entertainment is like a broad spectrum. No, no, I think you have a great balance yeah. as well. Along I, I'm not talking about myself, bro. I'm, I'm no, no, a, but I do bro. think you have a good balance. Along <laughs> yeah, I'm a miskeen, bro. I need like, to. Like, you know, like the, the videos that you do where like uh, you're like uh, lip syncing? Yeah, that's the, great. that's the videos I'm talking about. Like, that's the rabbit hole. Because the thing is, with 2022, the algorithm for Instagram was trending audios. So, yeah. like, I grew a lot doing that. I did like videos and video after video got like three, four million views. Yeah, I was yeah. like, this is the first time I got this. So I did all of that. But the thing is with the problem with that is what's the value? It's only like this it's one thing to be entertaining, but I think like if you're gonna have a business around it, if you're gonna do something long term, you need to have value. Yeah. Entertainment by itself is not a value. It's a way of commun like communication. Yeah. Do it make sense? There has to be an end objective to it. Yeah, like it, that. Even even if like we talk about comedians, like the second thing I want to mention is like you can have comedians that are making fools out of themselves. And you can have comedians with Issa, with honor, and like you know you see them and you think, mashallah, that's an like he got a point. The thing is with comedians, they are storytellers so. in a package, mm -hmm. and that's the value. The value is the story, not the jokes. Yeah, that's just a way of transmitting. So, so I think the problem with a lot of like subhanAllah you see a lot of Islamic or Muslim con like people out there uh, mocking the religion huh mocking, mocking the religion not mocking the religion but making religion as the you know the vehicle of tr transmitting their entertainment the jokes mm -hmm. and I think that's a dangerous path man like for real like you you see people talking about the prayer. You see, I've seen like crazy videos, like people they are playing God, talking to themselves with like this low voice and all. Like, bro, are you joking with me, man? Like, and that that's the thing. That's 
if you don't have a value underneath your entertain like entertainment, you're gonna go there because you're yeah, just gonna yeah, get yeah. worse, man. Right? And I, I, I was afraid because I left that. I left all of that. I don't know if you've seen like that's 2022, Simon. So 2023 is like you know, <laughs> different. I never, got, I never saw that, that that stuff. No, 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 I never saw that stuff. No, it's not that. Like, bad. I've seen I'm the, li- I've I, seen I the lip syncing mark- stuff that you do now, which I think is cool and Hand- fun. Yeah. yeah. No, I don't. I don't think I. I didn't mock the religion, by the way. I didn't do yeah, it. Yeah, so yeah. I just used trending audios and just did something like, uh, the thing is, when you have an audience, right, in front of you, you need to really know who are they. So. Otherwise, you don't, like, you don't know what to deliver. And then you do something relatable. Like, it doesn't really matter what you say, as long as it's relatable, as long as someone can listen and see themselves in that story, place themselves there, or some, like, connect themselves with the story in some way. Yeah. Does it make sense? Like, yeah. that's like how movies are made. Bro. You have a, you know, a superhero, you have something, he's like coming from underdog, you, he makes it, like, wow, you know, and people feel like they get the dopamine rush of feeling like, wow, I want to be there or something, right? Yeah, you know, what you just mentioned about the people who maybe will make videos and not think about the consequences of the videos. I think about this a lot Mm. and it's such a scary thing because I think a lot of people do post content and and maybe I fall into this category. I'm not saying it from a, uh, I'm not saying it from like a higher place. I'm sure I've fallen into, there's hundreds of hours of content of me online through the podcast. So I've definitely made many mistakes. However, I do think that we do need to, as Muslims, be a bit more careful uh, and have a filtering process when we put something out, not just because it would be good for the algorithm or be a good post. Right. Because it, wh- we have to understand that at some point, we have to answer for everything that we put out and for millions of people are going to see it and, and stuff like that. And, and, and actually, everything you do has to be incredibly microscopically intentional and i'll give you two examples because i can only speak from experience Mm. i'll give you an example of where i feel we've done that well and just so it doesn't feel like i'm being arrogant i'll give you an example of where we've done it really badly so (laughs) where i feel like we've done it well is from the beginning we may have slipped but i i I don't know that we have but Mm. i'm sure we have but one of the things that has been important to us from episode one is uh, you know, there's a narration that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They said they, it was about joking, and the Sahaba said to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, "Oh, uh, uh, you know, you." Uh, th- there was a conversation that was happening, and they said to him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, "You make you make jokes," and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Yes, but I'd never, I don't lie." In my jokes, right, yeah, yeah. And so that hadith just hit me when I first said it. And it started love it to me at the right time. And so what we did is, we made sure. That regardless of what we content would create, the joke was never a lie. There was never a lie in the joke. Right. Uh, even in the podcast, like sometimes we do having banter in a podcast, and we would sit through it and watch it and remove it if, it, if for it to make sense. And sometimes it was so good, like it would bang, like if we left <laughs> it there. But we removed it. We sometimes we remove that whole portion, maybe fifteen minutes, because of that. It, it doesn't make sense without that line. Mm. And um, that's one thing. And then, and then other things we would do is. There's this, there's this, like, as you know, like this fiqh behind exposing yourself, essentially. Yeah. Where the asal is, you don't expose any of your sins. No, definitely. Sometimes there may be a situation, and we're not, like, you know, I'm not like a, a faqih, right? Mm. Is that what you call him? Like someone who, like... Faqih, yeah, faqih. I can't be the judge of that, right? Like, because there's certain situations in which exposing a particular sin may have benefit for wider community but it's hard for me to make those judgments yeah, we cannot do that like, right we're, we're like <laughs> and so we? <laughs> we would sieve through episodes yeah or note down when we heard someone because in conversation you do it in conversation you say ah oh, hey so yesterday when i was at you know the cinema watching this particular movie and they were they're not, you know they're not, and we'd listen for that and we'd just remove it because we're not saying that we're perfect either we're not mm. but there's a difference between what you do and then what you say in public there's a big difference because many people are going to hear it. And so these are things that we try to listen out for and we try to remove them for their guest stuff because at the end of the day, if we can remove, if we can remove harm for our brother, mm. maybe Allah will cover us, you know? And yeah. so here's a situation where we did it really badly and I'm so grateful for the friends that I have. So 
one of the things I would often do on the podcast is I would relate something to a song lyric, mm. even as recently, right? I'll be like, ah, oh, you know, um, that like that reminds me of this lyric because I'm not saying that I've listened to the lyric or I listen mm. to the song, but I like I may have heard of this lyric through mm. social media or something, right? Mm. And even though I don't respect uh, the person, the lyric makes sense. Oh, it reminds me of this lyric that oh, said like like like, that, yeah. I, like you know every person should be and so. One guy sent me a voice note, a good brother of mine recently, and he said, Aki, even though you're not saying it in that way, by highlighting the lyric and by saying who the lyric is by, you might be leading people to search for that song, mm -hmm. to listen to that lyric. And uh, there's millions of people who sometimes listen to the podcast. And so they went, I, st oh. I was like, it's probably so true. Mm -hmm. And one could argue, one could argue that you, you know you're overthinking things, but really, like, no, that's true. Bro. Is this a game that you want to play? Well, I'm, I'm starting to think what I've said here right now. <laughs> like, no, 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 man, <laughs> what, I, what I must say. No, but no, it's no, true. Right. Like the thing is, we need to give each other. That's a beautiful part with the religion. I've seen, like, you give each other advice, and that advice is because you want the other people to go to Jannah. So that's the thing. That's the ultimate goal. Like, inshallah, they're like, so. hopefully, that's where advice come from. So, but you don't see that in any other area. Yeah or any other group of people. Yeah. They give advice because they have something to gain. That, so, right? Or they just want to be bitter. Even like they they know something they can say to improve that person, but don't say it. Because they want that person to, to suffer, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, you know. Actually, the, the, the Muslim is a believer to his brother. Uh, yes. So the Muslim is a mirror to his brother. Yeah, yeah. The believer is a mirror to his brother. Yeah, definitely. So, subhanAllah. And that's like what you said, like I was thinking now, like now, being a revert, that's so tricky. Because thing is, I have a life before Islam and after Islam. So before Islam, obviously, like it was, I didn't have anything to follow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't have a Sharia or something Hadith. So, so, I didn't care, bro. So. so sometimes I talk about that life, but I'm only like, even in all my social media, uh, people like to see the tattoos haram, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. That's the that's the meme like of my social media page, like haram. You always find. Uh, we, some, we've been through that with Sam. Don't worry, like. Yeah, like, and then like sometimes I can talk about it. Like you know, I was coming from this background because. I see, I'm not saying I'm making like ijtihad now by myself. I know th that's another thing I want to touch. When you do something like this, you're going to put yourself out there, out there. Don't do it alone. Like, yeah, you, need, you need to have a team. Yeah. Like it can be your spouse. Like me, like my wife, she, she can log into my Instagram. So. She can know, who, she, can, she can see all the messages I write. I have multiple people around me. When I post, they can write like, dude, you should, there are many posts I removed mm. because I got, Someone, you know, talking about like that could be misunderstood. Yeah. So alhamdulillah, like you said, with the bad stuff, you do bad stuff. Like so, you so. do mistakes. So, so. And sometimes the mistake is like, fine, it, I can leave it up there. I yeah. did some weird sinking. Mm. But sometimes it can be Islamic mistakes, right? Yeah. You say something wrong Islamically and that's leave it be, right? Remove it. It doesn't. Yeah, because oh, in, in, in the public realm. It's definitely easy, better to stay on the gray on the on the safe side of the gray area. Definitely, yeah. Definitely. Generally speaking, it's better to stay on the safe side of the gray area. Obviously, as we know from the hadith, but especially in public, like yeah, it's sometimes better just like stay on the safe side. But look, like I said, we trip up as well. But uh, these are yeah, these are uh, these are big topics, man. It's, it's funny because. We said we would start the podcast with 35 minutes in. We said we'd start the podcast with a little brief introduction to you. We should, even though we're like halfway through, we should probably <laughs> reel it back. So, yeah. Um, no worries, man. We were um, speaking off air and saying that there's many podcasts where you've given kind of your story. Yeah. And so we didn't want this entire episode to be a story. But for those of you, who, those people who don't know Simon Says Squat, right. uh, who, how is um, the Simon that we now know? Mm. Simon that we now know. Yeah, SubhanAllah, like, like you said, there's already stories out there, like podcasts I've done. And the thing is, you know, SubhanAllah, it's always like the, when you have a story of a reversion, coming back to Islam, and there's always different angles. So that's why you can talk a lot about it. You can dissect it in a different way, uh, like compared, compared to another story, right? Because where I came from, I came, obviously I'm, I'm Swedish, coming from Sweden, Swedish parents. And the thing is with Sweden, it's a very secular country. One of the most secular countries in Europe, if not the secular country. Because um, you have like countries like, all right, they are Christians, this and that. But in Sweden, it's very different. Like it's like atheism 
is being pushed out in the educational system in a different way. You got Darwinism, you got all these things that often relate to atheism and being pushed in a whole different way. Okay. I'm, so that's the background I came from. So grew up as an atheist. And now it's a very vague term uh, because I think, I believe most people are not atheists. Uh, people are atheists either by arrogance or ignorance. They impossible that you select this way of life because you believe in it. Because so, it's not a belief. So, so. Just look at the word, a the theism. Like the absence of theism is not a belief. It's just rejection. All the, like That's the way it is. You don't have any alternative. So that's where I came from. I grew up like that. And like, uh, yeah, I mean, you can go into that story, but it's already up there. But I grew up trying to be famous, like I said in the beginning, um, well, working create, like in, in, uh, in the industry of music. That's where I came from. Um, then the thing is, you know, what happened was like a turning point. Because there's always, in any story, like especially when it comes about coming back to Islam, even if you're born Muslim or non-Muslim, right? There's always a, turn, a point of, you got like a fork in the road. You got two options. There's no way back. You cannot go reset, like go to the last checkpoint. You know that, like you take this road, you're gonna take it, right? So that was when my mom passed away. Okay. So that was the big turning point for me, because all up until that point, it was very easy to reject the purpose of life, mm -hmm. all the questions related to that, why I'm here, what happens after this life, what's the purpose, and it's very easy to reject that when you don't have consequences in front of you. Right, it's very easy, like for people eating meat, and you know, talking about that, and not seeing the animal being slaughtered. That's a different thing, right? I'm not talking about veganism. I'm just like an analogy. Like when you see something, that's when you are confronted by the reality of it, and that's why I got confronted by the reality of my own beliefs, and that they don't make sense, bro. When my mom passed away, I realized. She was 41 she, when she passed away. She was so very young. Yeah, uh, she got something called an aneurysm, which is like a um, like uh, something in the brain that happens and just cuts off the oxygen and all these things, right? And it can happen to anyone. She was healthy otherwise. Huh? She was healthy otherwise. Yeah, yeah. I mean healthy, healthy, but she was young. She was the thing is she was drinking a lot, and she was uh, you know smoking cigarettes and all these things, which seems to be the lead cause. We don't know. We cannot know for sure. That was the turning point. So I realized, okay, I'm on I'm in this life, bro. I'm doing these things. I have money, like I'm not a millionaire, but I have like it's good. It's a good life. Dunya wise, right? But it was not a good life spiritually, like inside of me. It was, I was crumbling down. And especially after this it was like man, there's no purpose. Like I'm gonna do this and then I'm gonna die. And it's like, well, many points in my life, I was thinking to myself, like, life is not worth living. Like, you should just, you know, close the book now. How old were you when your mom died? I was 20, let's see, I was 20, exactly 20. Wow, so this was 2015, man, yeah. That. Uh, born 95. You're so just 20. entering, like, manhood. Yes, and I was not prepared for manhood <laughs> either, man. I was like, it's fine, there was a lot of things happening. Now, when this happened, I started to confront myself with, the, with this, these questions. The first question was, what's the, perp what's the meaning of everything? Like, why? That's the first question. And I think what happened is I, the brain is so, such, such a miracle, uh, like a machine. You, the, you get the output, qu the quality of output depends on the quality of input, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So asking the right question will give you a, quite a good answer, right? And what happens is when you ask why, you're being curious, that's when your like prejudices, it shuts down, all these things, all these barriers, like pre perceived thoughts, all the illusions you build up for yourself tumbles down. Because now you you're curious, right? So that's what happened. I was in between a lot of job, like doing my career career, like music and other jobs. So the thing is I met a lot of different people. And this is subhanAllah the will of Allah. 
because one of the jobs I met a really Christian Swedish guy, and this is rare, man. Like, you you rather find gold than that type of person. And then at during my career, I had a partner, a Muslim, but he was not religious at all. Like he was like only in the name, and he did everything else. Like the thing is, I had these two people to talk with, so. Obviously, this Christian guy knew where uh, that I was interested in religion, so I'd ask him about his religion. And then, um, subhanAllah, one thing that, uh, the second turning point was when I sat in my living room, and every morning I did this type of meditation, like five minutes, because I was like so anxious and depressed, I needed something just, just down. Like I needed to rest my, because every waking moment, it was all these annoying thoughts. Like, why am I lying? Why are you here? You suck. You terrible thoughts, right? So I needed to shut that down. But then eventually with this, these meditation practices or routines I did in the mornings, I tried to make dua. And mind you, I was still an atheist. I did not accept the thought of a creator. I did not accept a religion. So I thought to myself, like, I could try. What? <laughs> it can't hurt, right? So I lift up my hands. I didn't know what, how to do that, but I did this. I lift up my hands like this, and I said, "Why did you naturally do that and not like clasp your hands together?" I know, like okay. That's so interesting, though, isn't it? The thing is, what I thought I, I want to help. Yes, yeah, so that is so that like, is very like, open. I begged for help. Yeah. Right. So this is like that's a very inviting uh, stance as well because uh, body language experts say that. This is a very in inviting stance. When I speak to you like this, yeah, I invite yeah. you to just talk to me and to exactly. ask, to, to ask to have a dialogue. And if it's like this, all of a sudden, yeah, yeah. I'm controlling the situation. You're sat there, yeah. you know, and it's like yeah, hands yeah. are down. Yeah, yeah. That's very I interesting, it isn't it? That no, you, I'm well yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I did this, and subhanAllah, I never, I really hated, like for context, I hated religion. I used to sit and talk trash about Islam with my friend that also hated Islam. Like specifically Islam, because in Sweden back then, on television. Yeah, I'm sure that's very normal. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, unfortunately, I think it's better now. It feels I like. I don't know, man. There's a lot of Islam. No, but the thing the is, they starting to like people talking about fake news. People are talking more about news not being all the only source of information. Fine. So you think that perhaps people are a little more open-minded now? Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm feeling. Yeah, fair. Like, or, or, I don't know. Like, it depends on the context. I'm looking at Sweden. So. Like, I see a lot of Swedish people coming to Islam. Like, like me, and they come from this background of, oh man, like this, what media told me was not true, right? They're open-minded, they're willing to, to research. Now, uh, when I did this, I, did, I didn't want to say the word God, I didn't want to use those terms, because I thought religions are stupid, it's fairy tales, they are fairy tales. So I said, the one who hears me and the one who sees me, that's what I used. Asimir wow. al Basir. Wow. SubhanAllah. One of Allah's, two of Allah's name. So I said, the one who sees me, the one who hears me, guide me to whatever is right. Guide whatever you think is good for me. So I, I, I didn't really care about my desires anymore. Wow. I thought like, bro, I've, I've tried to fill this cup inside by myself. I haven't worked out well. Mm -hmm. So I leave it to you, whoever you Isn't are. Isn't it amazing how so many stories where people come to the deen, or even born Muslims, but they become close to Allah, it begins with them just asking. Yeah. Just asking Allah for guidance. Bro, like, you can go a thousand steps away from Allah, but one step yeah. is just enough to go back. So. Allah always has. Because I, he I heard this from some, some, a video just passing by when I scrolled to social media and was a sheikh something. He said, every time your heart makes a beat, it's asking Allah for permission. Yeah. And Allah grants its permission. Every time your lungs gasp, gasp yes. for air, oh. they ask Allah for permission. So I thought, like, even in, while you're in sin, like the worst of sins or whatever it might be, Allah is still keeping you alive. Yeah. Because there might how, be a chance. Look how merciful Allah is. Yeah. We had a conversation with the Sheikh on Fresh Ground. I think it might be Nustad Abdul Ahad, I can't remember. But he, whoever it was, they said, you know, like, there's uh, various narrations like um, if you go to Allah, hands ban Allah comes to you and arms exactly. stuff like this. this and Allah. and if you come walking to Allah, Allah comes running to you. Hmm. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that a hadith? Yeah. yeah. And um, 
this Sheikh that we had on, he said, if somebody is walking and somebody is running, who is more eager to meet who? Mm. <laughs> the one running, right? It's <laughs> like, <laughs> and it was like, Allah, look how, merciful, how, yeah. how, how, how big of sinners we are, how shamelessly sinful we are. Yeah, Allah is, um, Allah is so merciful mm. and he loves us. Uh, despite us transgressing against ourselves, ultimately in something that he has already warned us against, mm. yet he is so quick to forgive and uh, to pardon and to replace those sins with good deeds. Yeah, well, and we have to make that effort towards him, and we have to repent, and then and then post repenting, um, f- follow up with good deeds, yeah, as def- Allah mentions in the Quran. And uh, it's incredible. Subhanallah. But yeah, so so yeah, that's so not for sure. So you made the art, and you said, as an atheist. Guide, yeah, as an atheist, yeah, guide me. And then where did that guide? How did that guidance? In what form did that guidance arrive? It was the weirdest <laughs> guidance. It didn't happen to me. <laughs> first okay. off, you know, the, the friend, the Muslim friend I had, who was like crazy, it happened to him first. Okay. So Allah guided him. Okay. We were sitting in a studio making a thing, and he would say like, pause the music. I need to go and pray. He went into the booth, right, where you do the recording. Uh, and I can hear him, right? I had the mic is on. Allahu Akbar, right? Yeah. I'm like, bro, something's going to blow, right? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, still in that mindset. Wow. But since he was my friend, I knew him. It was like... A safe zone. Right? It yeah. was like, when he came back, it was like, wow, what happened? What, what was that? I've never seen anyone pray in, like... Because the thing is, like, being in the context of very secular country, you don't pray. Mm-hmm. There's no prayer mm-hmm. involved in your life, man. Mm-hmm. It's you, like me, myself, and I. That's it. Yeah. And you do your thing. So there's no tawakkul. There's no reliance upon anyone. So he told me about like this Islam. Like, this is the prayer I do. I'm a Muslim, right? I said, okay. So it was actually a discussion I had both with him and the other person, right? The Christian guy. And it took one year. But the funny thing is, even a f- couple of weeks after this incident with the prayer with this guy, I asked first the Christian guy, who is God? And he told me the belief he had, and I couldn't reconcile with that. It felt so far away from what I, f- like, I couldn't make sense out of it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, you, you're pointing at something and telling me it's something that it's not. So, so it's like, okay, if I'm gonna believe this, I need to lie for myself and uh, bro I, wallahi, wallahi I'm still telling you wallahi I really wanted this religion <laughs> why because I could continue with my life right mm. I could do my stuff and but you just couldn't believe it no that's the thing yeah. I couldn't be sad because why should I join something I don't believe I could just oh. stay the same like in my oh. atheistic way oh. but when I asked this friend my friend he the only thing he did was he read read to me Surah Al-Ikhlas right and he explained these four verses. Like, Allah is one. There's not two, three, four. He's a summit. Everything is need of him, he's need of no one. Self, self-sufficient. He was not begotten and did not begot. Nothing is like him. And I thought to myself, bro, it was like, I found, you know, when you, you have... I found the one I was looking for. Yeah, but you, you know you have the a, boxes. You know I have a puzzle and there's one piece, you can't find it. Yeah. You're looking everywhere and I found it. I put it there, bro, it matches perfectly, man. This is exactly what I'm... Like, this is... If it was... If there were a religion tr- that was true, this is it. Or like, this is it. So, then I knew it was true. Then obviously it took like one year of whiz was and you know struggles yeah. with myself like oh what well, we'll these people say and this and that yeah you gotta get yourself over the line yeah but then i did it alhamdulillah like you got over the line actually because you know uh i've met some people who even got as far as what you just described and then they just couldn't they they wanted so badly to take shahada but they just couldn't they didn't and even then you think, you know what, this guy's so close, he believes in Islam, he believes in the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he's, he's ready to go so and at some point he'll, um, he'll do it because he believes and it's just about yeah. taking the shahada. Mm. And uh, one particular individual that I'm thinking of that it was like this and then he never took it. And to this day, and now he's too far away from Islam. 
So it's like um, one of the brothers, I was, I'm going to turn the AC off. Um, one of the brothers that became Muslim uh, maybe like a year ago, in the, uh, when I was speaking to him, I said, I gave him this story. Mm. And I said, you right now believe in Islam fully. And you're, the only thing you're saying is you're not ready to take shahada because of uh, you want to fix up parts of your life. But this window that you've been given, where you are, where you know it's true, yeah, that's you don't know how long this window is. Y you might get to a point where you, this is your test. You take your heart now, or you don't. And if you don't, you could be misguided again, because we've seen that happen. Oh. Because I never knew until I saw that in real life. I mm. never knew that could happen. I thought once someone believes, no, just... it's just about convincing them to take your heart. It could take ten years, but they once they believe, they believe. Akhi, it's not true. They can believe to the point where they, oh, they, they're desperate. Akhi. I've seen someone desperate to take shahada, but there's something in their mind holding them back, and it's always to do with family. Most that from what I've seen. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen them. It's Akhi, take the shahada. At, like, if you have to, take the shahada and don't tell no one. Yeah. But don't not take it. Yeah. The no. worst thing is not take it. Take it and, you know, you're still a sinner, like, every, like all of us are. Take it and hide it from your family if you have to. Yeah. But don't not take it. And actually, the brother didn't take it. And he's and he, uh, he's so far from, ev like, uh, may Allah guide Allah him. Guide him. I mean, but, I mean, um, yeah. So that's what I said to this other brother. And alhamdulillah, he, he ended up taking shahada. He took shahada. As in this, this other brother who, when I told him this story. Bro, this is like, look at the Prophet and Sallam. like his uh, uncle, right? Uh, Abu Talib. Like he knew, like if I'm, I'm not mistaken, I'm <laughs> always like very nervous talking about, uh, you know. I get very nervous. Though. You yeah. shouldn't. You're. you're uh, <laughs> no, no, bro, no, no. Uh, you shouldn't be so worried. But when he was laying on his deathbed, and bro, he knew that the Prophet was oh, the true prophet. Sorry. He That's knew. Not a he was defending him. Yeah, everything, yeah. right? While the whole society was against him, he was defending him. He was laying on the deathbed, bro. Like khalas, you done. You're done, man. And he says, please say the shahada, right? The key to Jannah. And he's about to say it. And then his people say, are oh, you going to leave this religion of our forefathers? And he doesn't say it. And he dies. He dies without the shahada, bro. Yeah, you know, I saw Ustad Abdurrahman's uh, Sirah class. And he said that even look at the uh, hikmah. Like, why was it? That he didn't, that uh, he wasn't Muslim, and it would have been a lot more difficult because he was like almost like the God, like the Prophet was like uh, protected in many ways because there was a person who was in their tribe, you know, who they respected mm. that was like, look, right. this is, and he was talking about the uh, Ustad was talking about the benefits of the, the, hik the hikmah behind that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. obviously, this but I know that's I know that's separate to what you're saying, but it just reminded me of that. Yeah, yeah this but what you're saying, Subhanallah, is very true. But the thing is, like, look, but yeah, on the deathbed, Subhanallah. Bro, look. Sorry, I feel like I took away from your point. No, your no. Point is, but as soon as you mentioned that, <laughs> I, I just started deeping like this other <laughs> thing. But I feel like I've now taken away from your point. No it's very, worries, no, no. I was a very bad. Um, what do they call it? No, uh, no, no, no. A very bad um, dance partner for you. No, there. no, no, no. Alhamdulillah. We, we. But no, your point is very valid. No, uh, so I kind of ruined your point. But no, it's true. but it's, I might have said something wrong, so people can correct me if I'm wrong. Please do it, and I ask a lot for forgiveness for the wrong things I say. The thing is, look, do you imagine what how long an eternity is? Like, can you imagine? I was having this conversation. That's the thing. Like, yeah, you cannot you imagine it. So well, I've think I've think about it so long. Every time I feel discomfort, like so, so do I. So much discomfort. Yeah, so like much. it's so hot outside. I'm like, yeah. Oh, this is nothing compared to Jahannam's. And we're talking about the fire that's the, the easiest fire, like yeah. easy level fire. That's like, you cannot even stand it. Your skin is going to melt off and you're going to get a new skin. And that's going to be an eternity. The good part with this life, everything comes to an end. Like pain, it comes to an end. There's no, you never, you are never depressed for, your, for the rest of your life. You are never happy for the rest of it. everything comes to an end but in, in the next life you, it's not it's not gonna end you're gonna wish it's end we, we're not like 50,000 years billions of years like it's not gonna end bro and that's why I'm thinking the only thing I regret when I became a Muslim was I didn't do it sooner well I am so thankful like that year any anything could have happened right and as you said like at least someone dying in ignorance 
Like I'm, th I'm thinking a lot about, about my mother. I can. That's another thing. Like I cannot make dua for her. I cannot make sadaqa for her. I can. I cannot do umrah for her. I cannot do anything for her. She died as a non-Muslim. So khalas, it's done. Her life is done. The only thing I hope for is that she died in ignorance, not knowing the true Islam, and she will be tested on Yom Qiyamah, and I will meet her in Jannah. That's the only, well, the only hope I have. But when that ignorance is lift, lifted up, and you know that Islam is true, there's no excuse anymore, bro. Like, what are you going to say to Allah? I knew it was true, but I didn't do it because of who? Right? Who cares, man? Like, Allah, your family, if, it, if they are your family, they're going to be there. Like, khalas, my family thought I'm going to be a terrorist and run to Syria or something, right? But it's still my family. And while I, till today, and this is rare among Swedish people, I have better relationship with my family than I had before. I'm talking with, instead of talking with my dad once a year, I'm not exaggerating, once a year, I'm talking with him a couple of times a month. Like, people think, well, that's nothing compared to once a year, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? You need to, like, I don't want to spam him. He's going to think, <laughs> go, leave me alone, block my <laughs> number or something, right? Sideways, yeah. And same with my sister and everything, right? And, bro, that's that's the only thing. If someone's listened to this, non-Muslim, I don't know if you have non-Muslim listeners, but, bro, there's a step, you got to take it. If you know that this step, you got to take it. Because yeah. if there's no excuse, you don't, what, you, you have nothing to bring to Yom Qiyamah, to, to the Day of Judgment in front of Allah. But alhamdulillah, Allah guided me, and I ask Allah to give a good ending for all of us. I mean, I mean, I mean, it was we were meant to start the podcast with your story, and we've ended it with your story. And I think it actually worked out well because we were able to kind of we actually brought you all home. So, uh, <laughs> Jazakallah, it was it was lovely. I oh, yeah. I always say to brothers that you know once you've done the episode one, once you've done the podcast once, you always work, you've got an open door policy because. We've got to know you now, and it'd be lovely to speak to you about all like different topics, yeah. different things. We haven't even delved into the world of fitness and mm. that kind of stuff, but it's a lovely introductory uh, episode. With you. you know, back in the day, we used to do like, I think one our longest podcast was about three and a half hours long. Ooh. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't have the stamina anymore. Like for a three and a half hour long yeah. episode. So we we've started doing like one hour episodes, and they're just a sweet spot. Like you have a great conversation, and you learn so much about somebody and stuff. But yeah, I mean, yeah, I think people just they're they're. Their attention span is it's got smaller. Th stuff. It's not three yeah. hours, man. But it's been, it, honestly, it's been lovely, and it's inshallah, we'll, we'll we'll get some time offline as well now. And um, uh, thank you so much for dropping by and for giving me your time and it on short notice as well. Yeah, so please just, let's do this again. It's Definitely, bro. sometime sometime this year for sure. Like, don't Definitely. let it be too long. Inshallah, inshallah bro. I would and love it. I would love it. We can it. learn about all of your kind of studies and stuff. But before we end, what is it that? Um, what is the, what does the future hold for Simon Says Squat? What's the plans? Right, yeah, there's a lot of things. I don't know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> always a lot of thoughts. But um, I'm that kind of guy. I like to equip myself with a sniper rifle first, right? And then when I know where I'm gonna target, I take the shotgun and run, f run there and shoot. <laughs> Makes sense, like. Fine. So I I like to focus on one thing. So now right now is obviously the fitness part, coaching Muslims to a better health, spiritually, physically. Uh, mentally, that's what I'm do, uh, what, what I'm doing right now, and just do my content, and uh, I'm actually yeah, I'm gonna start university, study, go for Islamic studies uh, after the summer, inshallah ta'ala. So I ask Allah for tawfiq in that, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, I mean there's much more like business opportunities I wanna go into and people I wanna meet, but inshallah khair, I, I I hope at the end of the day, I'm gonna die a Muslim, I'm gonna pray my five prayers. I'm gonna do a lot of istighfar, a lot of du'a, and that's what I hope. And if I die like that, خلاص, I'm good. Yeah, exactly. I'm good, inshallah. All of us, man. Jazakallah khair for your time, Simon. And inshallah, uh, guys, if you enjoyed this.